Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today, we're gonna be reviewing the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. I know that there's tons of videos and tutorials out there already, so I'm not gonna get too deep into the weeds. I'm just gonna give you more of a high level things that I really like about this drone compared to the regular DJI Mavic and some things that I'm not really impressed with. If you've watched this channel for a while, you know that I'm a huge fan of time lapses and motion lapses. So I really, really like the hyperlapse feature that they added to the DJI Mavic 2 Pro as well as the zoom. It's not that spectacular because you could do this before on the older drone just manually. What I would do is I would go into tripod mode and then I would just mash the stick in one direction and then you could either manually take pictures or you could just shoot a video the whole time and then speed it up. That's what I used to do. I like that it's one of the intelligent flight modes now, which makes it a lot easier. I do like that a lot, especially because right when it finishes, it kind of like compresses and makes that video for you right on the spot and you can put it on social media or anything like that, which you can see my, uh, my Instagram is just flooded with those right now. I really like that feature. It's, I don't think it's a huge selling point to upgrade though, like I said, because you can do it manually. This new Mavic boasts a full one inch sensor on the camera, which was one of the big selling points for me. I really like the quality that the camera can pick up. The low light performance is just awesome. The colors are great. I don't really color grade, but I can just tell the picture quality is just much better than the Mavic Pro. They've also improved the gimbal as well and now supports the camera on both sides and it's not hanging from those rubber bands like the one on the Mavic Pro was. So just some quick hits of the things that have been upgraded. You've got a better camera, you've got a longer flight time, you've got a higher speed, you've got a longer transmission distance, you've got sensing, on six sides, it's not a full 360 degree sensing, but you've got sensing in the front, back, top, bottom, and the sides. And you've got additional flight modes or improved intelligent flight modes. This drone also weighs a little bit more than the Mavic Pro, about 150, 160 grams more, so not much at all. Unfortunately, the batteries are not compatible from the Mavic Pro to the Mavic 2 Pro. So that's a really big bummer because they look very similar. Okay, so let me just talk about my experiences so far. Active Track 2.0 is a massive improvement in just the original Active Track. It picks up people and cars very easily and kind of puts this icon over them. Works very well. It also uses this trajectory prediction, which I've found to be very helpful and a big improvement so that if you go behind a tree or something like that, the drone is to some extent able to track you past that tree and then pick you right back up. So I've been very impressed with that. It's still not, you know, fully autonomous and as great as some people are pumping it up to be, but it is pretty good. Also, in that active track, it is utilizing the six directional sensors, so it can get around trees, go under and over things to keep tracking you. But it's important to know that that six direction sensing is only used in tripod mode and in active track. Now that could change in the future with software updates, but right now that's, that's where it is, and that's a pretty big deal because I did not do all of my homework and was flying the drone and was just testing out the quick shots and was doing the boomerang feature and I was under the impression that we were using the side sensors and it flew sideways right into a tree. I know that's completely my fault. Thankfully the drone actually hung on one of its front legs I guess and I was able to, believe it or not, I was able to throw a ball up into the tree dislodged the drone, and then it fell into a sheet perfectly that I had laid below it and had zero damage. And yeah, so I was very lucky. So I just want you to know that it's not using that six direction sensing except for active track and tripod mode. So keep that in mind. Forward, backward, above and below, but not the side. So in that boomerang, it was moving sideways and it went right into a tree branch. I just want to touch on the reasons to upgrade and maybe the reasons not to upgrade. The reason I upgraded is I was pretty much forced to upgrade. I sold my Mavic Pro 
about six months ago in anticipation for a new Mavic that was gonna come out. I didn't know what it was. I wasn't really using that drone at the time that much. I figured I could still get a very good price for it. So I went ahead and sold it. And then I just kind of been waiting to see what DJI would release. They released the Mavic Air. I decided to pass on that because it was just Wi-Fi only. It wasn't using um, radio like this one does. And I just kept waiting. And once they came out with that one inch sensor, what I was really hoping for was 4K at 60 frames a second, like the Phantom 4 Pro. But we didn't get that obviously. But this was enough for me to say, okay, I wanna hop back in um, with this Mavic 2 Pro, get that one inch sensor, start using the hyperlapse. I like the that it does have better active track. It's faster, a little bit longer flight time. The transmission has improved significantly for me. I pushed it out to where I used to lose transmission with my Mavic Pro and this thing was still rock solid. Some other improvements and differences is now you don't have the ability to fly it just with your phone using Wi-Fi. I never did that on the Mavic Pro, but that might be something you're interested in. Some small but nice upgrades that I wanted to talk about. One, and this is, this is huge, this remote will actually charge your phone, which I find just so nice because usually I have the brightness all the way up on my phone and it can die very quickly, or at least that was my experience with the Mavic Pro. The other thing is your sticks here, they're actually removable, so they unscrew now and they store up inside here. So really, really convenient. So you can put that away, take this one off, put this one away, and then fold it up. Fold your antennas up. Just really nice for traveling especially. So let me get into some stuff about the Mavic Pro and the Mavic 2 Pro and why you should or shouldn't upgrade. Or maybe you don't have a drone and you're looking to hop in. If you don't have a drone, if you're not a filmmaker or a photographer, I highly suggest getting the Mavic Pro. I expect it to continue to drop in price. If it gets down to 700 and 750 bucks, I think that will be a great deal and encourage you to hop in on the Mavic Pro. The obstacle sensing, like I said, is only working on active track and tripod mode. Those two intelligent flight modes, I never use that often in all honesty, so that hasn't really changed for me. And it shoots in 4K already, so it's, it's a great drone and it should be very affordable. You should also be able to look on eBay and get a used one as people are trying to upgrade. So I think if you're hopping in for the first time and you're not a photographer and you're not you know, making tons of videos, I really suggest if you're starting out, start with the Mavic Pro. If that image quality, and granted, it's not even that big of a jump in image quality, but if that image quality is important to you, then I suggest the Mavic 2 Pro. The Mavic Zoom didn't really have any appeal to me. It's got what looks like the same exact camera as the Mavic Pro. You just now have an optical zoom on the lens, which I didn't think was worth it. Um, I much preferred the bigger sensor and the better camera, the better color, the better quality over that ability to zoom. It just kind of felt like they took a Mavic Pro and then just kind of put an optical zoom on there and then threw it out at you. So I didn't really have any interest there, but if, if that is important to you, if you would like to be further away from things and get a better shot, maybe if you're going on like a safari or something like that, or you need to be further away from your subjects, then maybe look into that. But I highly recommend the Mavic 2 Pro just for all the upgraded things for someone that's been in the drone industry for a while, you've had some drones, but if you're hopping in for the first time, I really suggest you look at the secondary market for the Mavic Pro. I think you'll get a really good deal and you'll be able to test it out and see if you really like it. And then if you do, maybe you can turn around and sell that one and hop up to the Mavic 2 Pro or get the Mavic Pro and then wait for the next iteration to come out in the next year or so. I do wanna say, be very careful while flying. Don't crash like I did. Thankfully, I only lost two propellers out of it and was able to easily swap on new ones and I was good to go. Check before you fly. Please don't fly above 400 feet. Please don't fly over a bunch of people or near airports. Follow the rules. I'll link that stuff below so you can educate yourself. I recently took a trip to Fort Walton Beach. I did all my homework ahead of time. I got permission from Eglin Air Force Base to fly there. So 
If you're gonna go somewhere and you wanna fly, please check into it ahead of time. Don't just show up and expect that you can fly your drone because all that's gonna happen is that you're gonna hurt the hobby for everyone else if you're irresponsible. So please be responsible, know before you fly, check before you fly, and uh, stay safe out there. I hope this video in some way helps you decide if you're gonna get the Mavic 2 Pro, if you're gonna stick with the Mavic Pro, or even the Zoom. Um, or if you're gonna sit this iteration out and keep waiting. Thanks so much for watching Break It Yourself. We really appreciate you. Don't forget to thumbs me up, and we'll see you next time.